Tonight on Pioneer Governors, I host the first governor of Kiambu County, William Kabogo. Thank you very much for making time for us. Ascent. It's a pleasure. Let's begin with why you think you failed to reclaim your seat and uh, serve Kiambu County for a second term. Sometimes I find that as a very difficult subject mm -hmm. to deal with because if I start explaining, I will be saying I should be the governor of Kembu now. If you look at the, you know, the tests that were done by government, because of course they were carrying their own uh, surveys, uh, uh, probably a week before elections or before nominations, I was at 67%. So do you lose 67% in one week? But I've, as I've said in many interviews, really that is behind me. I am not the governor of Campbell. Campbell has a governor. So no matter what it is that we say, uh, it will not change that position. But and what I, do I you like to take it up from yeah. there. But what do you think happened? You know, parties need to sort out their nomination issues mm -hmm. and have true nominations as opposed to selections. Of course, once I say that, you rub... Uh, uh, the owners of parties or the leaders of parties or those who are responsible for nominations in the wrong way. But the fact of the matter is simple. There are many things that happen that time. Uh, we find someone locked up in school with uh, ballot papers the night of the nominations. How do you explain what it is that they are doing with those papers? We tell the party certain things are happening and they're not taken care of. This is the first time actually I'm talking about elections. Mm. I, I always try to avoid answering questions that have to do with um, the past election. So uh, you think... I came for elections to be able to come back another term right. and bring change to the people of Kiambu. Uh, what happened, happened. So the people of Kiambu should be able to tell uh, whether that was their choice, what is happening today, or whether that was something that was supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, done by myself, uh, but I have, I have stayed away from politics. Uh, if it were other people, when I was in office, they would shout very high about most of the things that are going on, but I have made it not my business. Yeah. I yeah. have said uh, people vote, people know who they voted. If that is true, that is the way they voted, they, they should hold those that are in office accountable, accountable. for what is going on, yeah. as opposed to looking for people like me and telling me to speak. Before because I don't away. want to look like I'm antagonizing the governor today. The governor he has today. a huge task. Mm. Before um, we move away from that, yes. a quick comment on you mentioned nominations. Do you think, had you clinched the Jubilee party? Because then are you saying obvious. the party is more important I mean, obvious. than that is your the election person? In, in, in uh, central Kenya. Right it would have been very difficult to go through, especially being uh, the county where the president comes from. It would be a monumental task, almost a miracle, to take a seat against uh, the ruling party. Mm -hmm. So nominations are normally the uh, The elections. deciding, almost, yes, it's, it's a non-issue after nomination. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. But then Something you needs to be and, done. Yeah. I considered, yes, and I mean, you, yeah. uh, there are things you see, you put energy in fighting, doesn't help you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and what is it that I'm fighting for? Right. I was not in Kiabu to make money. I was there to bring change and to give hope mm -hmm. to the young that um, the future will be brighter. And that's why we started um, putting a lot of emphasis on um, the fund that we were using to lend uh, startup capital mm -hmm. to young men and women to, to do uh, small businesses. Um, so really, the focus of my first four years, four and a half years, was to stabilize government, to have a functional government, mm -hmm. to have systems, which I'm glad 90% of my projections um, towards the end of the term, we had done almost 90% of them. So what have you been up to before we go back to 2013? Uh, I tell people normally I'm a businessman. Mm -hmm. What business? Uh, um, I do a lot of real estate. I also involve myself with imports and exports. 
um, and I'm a farmer. So politics for me is just a hobby uh, and a commitment to try and make sure I participate in making our country a better place. Yeah. So 2013, you elected governor and you come in. Uh, what was the state of Kiambu County at the beginning during that transition process? To use a simple language, crazy. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. The state as Kiambu or many counties were in was the municipalities, the local authorities, uh, former county councils, and you know very well how they worked, mm -hmm. where a full council meeting will be held for decisions to be made. And the majority will take the day, whatever it is, surrender of public properties, uh, running of uh, uh, town hall business, um, uh, rates collection, you name it. Anything that was done by uh, county governments, uh, I mean county councils, was done in a manner that you would never believe that it happens in the world. So again, we found people with that mentality. So to change people's mentality now that uh, you have a functional government and things need to be done in a systematic manner, uh, of course, taking into account uh, uh, good governance, mm. uh, it was almost impossible, impossible to change the minds of uh, people who had been in the council for 30 or so years. They say old dogs don't learn new tricks. Mm -hmm. But halfway the term, people had chickad lane. They so what had was seen the here, most difficult here, thing? Uh, one, like to establish a new uh, money collection system. Uh, you know, we digitized our revenue uh, collection. Mm -hmm. If you realize, most counties complain about the amount of money that comes from uh, the national government or from the exchequer, so, mm -hmm. so to speak. And you will see that, uh, like Kambu received about 6.9 billion the first year, uh, with a budget of about 13.2 billion. So a shortfall of almost 5 billion shillings. Uh, so uh, the first year, mm -hmm. uh, 2012 uh, to 13, the entire network of the former local authorities was collecting in total about 7,780 7 million shillings. Mm. So we were left with no choice but to streamline revenue collection, to enhance revenue uh, um, uh, collection, um, um, to seek uh, you know, help from external forces like the World Bank so that we could invest heavily on uh, automation yeah and if you remember that's when we got into trouble with the assembly then yes in fact i was about know, to bring Kabawa that up is buying yeah. computers but you at some point um hiked business levies and and, and permits uh, licenses no we didn't this is what i'm talking about propaganda rumor when people just don't have anything to do my opponents were busy fighting us had the matter at one not time you remember they said that we were charging chicken slaughter at 20 shillings if you slaughter a chicken in your home. Mm -hmm. And I asked myself, why don't these people ask themselves, for you to know at home how many chicken have been slaughtered, you need a watchman or a guard or a revenue officer in every home. Mm -hmm. And of course that's not possible. Those were rumors. Uh, so you what never we did, to increase no, the bracket what we of did revenue is we harmonized. Uh -huh. Remember we have, uh, we inherited eight municipalities and all these mus municipalities were independent of each other. So, and the county government is now one. So you will not have levies, different levies for different municipalities. So we had to harmonize. Some of the places had continued to uh, uh, increase their revenues over the years. That was Ruiru and um, I think Thika. Uh, places like Limuru, they were almost like 1% uh, of what Ruiru was paying. So we did regional uh, balancing and we selected the top, uh, I think, five, and we harmonized them. Those that were very low were increased. Right. Those that were very high yeah. were reduced. But the damage was supposed to be a political damage so that they would get rid of Kabogo. So mm -hmm. what is happening now that Kabogo is away? And so, Kabogo is not making noise about the things that we know are going on. My conversation with other pioneer governors, a lot has been we're not getting enough cash. So there's not focus on generation, it's telling national government to bring more well, to well, us. Well, uh, that is an argument that really is, is factual. Because you will see um, most of the activities of 
government were devolved. Agriculture, very important, mm -hmm. devolved. Health, very important, key, mm. devolved. Water, devolved. Right. Running of cities, it is a devolved. 14 functions were devolved, and almost 70% of the major functions were devolved. So really, is it really fair that 70% of functions of government are at the county government level, but funding is only 27%. Mm. And even now the president's big four are devolved functions? They are devolved functions, yes. Yeah. So really, are we devolved or not devolved? That's the question that people need to ask. So has President Kenyatta political will in terms of supporting I believe he has, but uh, you know, the president doesn't work alone. The president is a government. And uh, there has to be total goodwill from every corner to make sure that uh, uh, devolution works. Mm -hmm. But if you ask Mama Boga, if you ask anyone in the village, is devolution working, they'll tell you yes. If you ask anyone about healthcare in Kembu, I believe you understand, you know that uh, we were number one in terms of healthcare. Uh, um, we had enough medicine in our hospitals. We built 25 mother child care uh, units. We built um, uh, four new level four hospitals, which were incomplete. We built a new level five uh, reproductive health unit in Thika level five hospital. Six floors, 375 beds. 860 million in a record time, one year, three months. you find out anywhere in the Republic where yeah. such an investment was made. But a lot of the money is going into the revenue, is going into paying salary. The that's wage it. bill at the that's national it. A level? Very few counties manage the, uh, the, streamlining uh, the, the required uh, level of funding right. of 70% uh, uh, recurrent and 30% uh, uh, development. I think uh, the lowest we had was 26 in 2014. We raised to 28 in 2015, 2016, and probably 29 point something uh, in the last year of, of my uh, admin. So if we had taken our level, our revenue level to probably another 1 billion, that 1 billion would have gone directly into uh, development, raising our ratio from 29% development to about 34% development. But are you saying Kiambu County and even the national government needs all the people they've employed? Shouldn't there be a look there like we had? The, there was a need to harmonize exactly. uh, uh, personnel. Uh -huh. And uh, an analysis was done between county governments and the national government, uh, uh, which they used to call CAPS. But uh, it never got anywhere. Because we decided, and, uh, and I remember the president uh, set up a committee at um, uh, OP uh, in the beginning of the term where we sat together to analyze the level of human capital in, in county governments and we agreed that uh, uh, probably 50% of the people that were employed there, remember they were Kajos. Kajos were employing people in uh, uh, the terms, in terms of who you're related to. If you're related to the mayor and you had no education, you'd get yourself an accountant's job. So we had very many of these people. Mm -hmm. Again, all the stuff that were in devolved ministries or ministries that had functions that uh, became devolved, they were surrendered and sent to uh, county, county governments. Government. So we wanted to say, let's survey and carry out an exercise. What jobs do we need to have? Mm -hmm. How many people do we need to have in these ministries or in these devolved functions? And we did so in Kembo. We tried to surrender these people, their former ministries, but it was becoming very difficult mm -hmm. because every other county wanted to do so. And we had suggested in, in, the, in the, the forum that the president put together right. that we develop a fund that will become more or less like a golden handshake mm -hmm. for those that will be relieved of du their, their duties so that they would have a good golden handshake to go and do a small business or have capital for startup. Right. And then we would have a lean and efficient public service. Uh, but you will realize in Kambu, we did not hire unless it was very necessary. We hired, I think, uh, 340 nurses. We needed nurses in our new hospitals. Uh, we hired, um, I think, 2,100 uh, ECD teachers. You know, ECD is a devolved function. 
before nursery schools had no equipment, had no teachers, had nothing. Parents were paying, mm -hmm. and they were paying probably a teacher four or five hundred shillings a month. So what do you expect from four or five hundred shillings a month for a yeah. teacher? So we hired teachers, those ones that were teaching on a voluntary basis, uh, those that were qualified, uh, we hired uh, them uh, so that they would start taking care of uh, the kids before standard one. Yeah. Uh, that was a necessary uh, thing because we had to. Uh, of course, departments like uh, garbage, uh, you know, environment and garbage clearing uh, department, we were not collecting all our garbage. So we had to buy new equipment. We had to uh, increase uh, the personnel of, uh, of um, garbage collection. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, in seven months, there was no garbage. Kabisa, there was no garbage in Kambu. Really? Yes. You would drive from Riru on this bypass and you would know when you're in Kambu or when you're in Nairobi. So the golden handshake, what, what happened with that? Because we've seen now... Just uh, like any other any of those reports that just acquired dust on shelves. Yeah. It didn't uh, materialize. And that is what takes me back to the political will with this, because you say that in, during the devolution conference... Sometimes it's not the political will. Sometimes it's the red tape. Uh, in terms of bureaucracy of government officers. You may blame the president at the top there, but what's happening at the ministry level to get something across a ministry is a nightmare. Because even now, the COG chair spoke about this during the devolution conference marking five years, saying that, again, sitting in the shelves is a report on how to streamline and avoid the duplicity uh, of roles of the, the national government used to have. They're now devolved, but mm -hmm. still there's all manner of institutions. Yes. And that's Why kind. do we so, have parastatos that are doing functions that are devolved? So what, what is this red tape that really, at the end of the day, we cannot uh, gather political will at both levels? Because at the end of the day, it's about a direction to go. Some of these things is basically not political. It's just that do people want to release? Do they want to let go? Um, and sometimes it's hard. And isn't change, that political will? Change is difficult to, accept, to be accepted. Um, but uh, you can see, like, the fight now against corruption. It has taken a monumental uh, 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 position today mm -hmm. that uh, people even who would imagine they want to do something crazy today in corruption, they will think twice. Um, and and uh, I see commitment. Uh, I wish uh, 20 years ago this happened. We would be having probably three times the development we have had in the last 20 years. Yeah. If we didn't have corruption. One of the hot issues during your term as governor in Kiambu was around the headquarters of the county, and it was reported that the transitional authority designated like I said it before, to Kiambu, but I you was, chose Pika. I was governing Kiambu against a horrific um, sort of wave of people against Kabo. Um, they made sure that there was noise at every other month, especially times that I would go to China or go somewhere else to Israel or something, they would create a story and it would move like wildfire, simply because there was nothing else to talk about. So how do you move and the you, headquarters you realize, to Thika? No, what happened is, when we came in in 2013, there were two places only that would have uh, had a county government's uh, seat for at least six, seven months as we sort ourselves out. One of those places was Kiambu, uh, the former county, uh, Kiambu County Council offices, where now the assembly sits, or Thika Municipal uh, uh, offices. Uh, that is where Thika Municipality headquarters was during the defunct local authorities. So we sat with the assembly leadership, and we agreed that the assembly had more officers, they, had, they required more room than the executive. So we allowed them to take the first choice of Kambu headquarters, uh, where now the assembly sits. And the executive sits in Thika for six or seven months as we prepared the current now headquarters, which uh, instead of building a headquarters for 450 million, we tried to bambanya as, lit as little as we could. And uh, because of those 
procurement, uh, self-building, in-house building. We could not do it as fast as we thought we could. But in a year and a half, we had completed our headquarters and moved. And that noise ceased there. So because MCA is in their Legislative Assembly uh, and meeting summit in Mombasa the other day, the biggest, hottest issue was the word fund. And anyone who supported it was cheered on and there were ululations. And anyone yes, who castigated it... they want to have a grip of the money. Yes. So if you look at the County Government Act, right. I'm not sure what section, it says clearly that, you know, clearly, that uh, NEMCA should not involve himself directly or indirectly with development work. Mm -hmm. So is in creating a word fund in contravention of that act. And in that meeting, the deputy president promised them that they would make sure... So let them they... legislate. If you want to make these changes, legislate for them. So Why is it you want to have the MP mm. doing legislative work, which is making laws and, uh, and, and, and um, supervising or, or overseeing the national government in terms of executive? MCA is overseeing the executive of the county government. They want to participate in development, in taking money and going to do the actual development. Mm. Then why don't you just kill the executive, create a fund, and give it to the MCA? Because so that you don't have, you know, du du you know duplication of, yeah. uh, of work. Do you why do you want the Ministry of Roads under the county government to fix roads, yet you want to give the MCA money to fix a road? Hey, hello. So do you share with those who say no, the thought that them. there's an obsession I with every elected I'm, leader to have a ward and a fund they're controlling, even culture the women? It is because we have of telling the people that you are the one who is doing development. Mm -hmm. The MCA should be able and to be honest, tell the public, I do not do development. We pass a vote for the governor to do development. These are the things that I have passed during the budget time to give money to governor and our work is to let to, to supervise or to oversee that the governor is doing what he's supposed to do yeah equally mps but because if you look at the social media today they are bashing some mps no the roads aren't passable or water <laughs> we don't have you know we have educated the public the wrong way yeah so uh Manainchi knows that uh, mca is supposed to know uh, to, to fix roads do we need all the positions we have now in county government from governor to now sometimes we've seen very controversial if cases of the, deputy governors if you look at the county government act right right it stipulates the executive of the county as the the cc that, that's the uh, committee of uh, uh the county committee of executives mm. uh it has 10 members maximum so we create about 10 ministries in my time we had eight ministers my deputy governor was a minister, and I was the tenth one. So we didn't need to create ten new positions. Right. And and, and if you look at the di distribution of ministries, I I would not imagine that anyone would say that is excessive. But we had excess staff in departments that were devolved. Um, again, Kambu with twelve constituencies had sixty wards, uh, sixty wards with um, twenty-seven additional nominated uh, MPs to balance the, the gender requirement. Right. Uh, if you ask me my honest opinion, you do not need 90 people in an assembly. I traveled widely uh, uh, in terms of, uh, um, I was in the US, I think it was Montgomery uh, County. Uh, they have four councillors. Mm -hmm a wider place than Kiambu. And this is why I'm saying we need radical changes in, in, in uh, the setup of uh, uh, governance. My proposal would be, mm -hmm. instead of having 60 wards, Kiambu will have 12 wards equal to the constituencies. So we'll have a member of the county assembly representing the constituency. Mm -hmm. Then the question comes, what happens to uh, the the Mudosis, the, the National Assembly MPs. Um, then my radical change there is make one MP in every county 
to go and make laws and do nothing else. Right. Of course, the constitution requires that there is no uh, uh, taxation without uh, representation. So at the ground level, the MCA of the constituency will represent the constituency. At the national level, the county MP will represent the county in uh, legislation and taxation. Mm -hmm. So that gets rid of all the 400 MPs who by now three quarters have not spoken. They have not participated in any committee or the National Assembly. Should you also condense the county governments from 47 to 8 regions? If need be, if there are some that are not functional because of uh, probably lack of uh, um, uh, institutions, facilities, etc. There is room in the constitution to merge counties. You are aware of that? Mm -hmm. Yes. There is also room for either part of government, national or county, to surrender a function, I think it's section 187 of the constitution, uh, so that uh, the constitution envisages a situation where if we don't have the capacity, for example, to handle health, uh, uh, would surrender that function to the national government and vice versa. And once you surrender a function, you surrender that function with its resources. Right. So really, um, I'm hoping mm. that sometimes so we need come a to constitutional change. Yes, and not to create positions for people. To reduce those you know, positions. It, it is to make constituent changes mm -hmm. that are good for the country. You can imagine how much pressure will take off the finance department of treasury by reducing just the number of uh, elected leaders. Okay, we'll continue with this conversation, talk a little bit more about accountability also uh, when you were governor and summoned by the Senate to answer uh, queries they had raised. I you. hope you're aware that we are the only county that finished two years audit. We'll be right back. Do you back. know how many times I went to the Senate? You know, initially we had mm -hmm. said, why do you want to invite a governor? But you know, these were the wars between, uh, uh, power struggle between the the Senate and uh, the Yeah, let's and take governors. a break and then come back and continue that conversation. You're watching Pioneer Governors.